question is, uh, I'm an MFT in California and I specialize in first responders. I just have to say your training on trauma and affair recovery in relationships has been a game changer for me. I was wondering how you would suggest presenting this specific trauma approach information to people in the first responder slash military world in a networking slash marketing presentation, not in a clinical role. Okay. Uh, well, let's see. Can you read that last question, the last sentence again? Yeah, one, wondering how you would suggest <laughs> presenting this specific trauma approach uh, to people in the first responder or military world if it's a networking or marketing presentation, not in a clinical role. Okay, so uh, you're just trying to get people on board as opposed to training them how to do it. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it sounds like it's maybe more your, you know, your marketing. You're maybe doing a presentation to first responders or military. But are they chaplains or are they couples? Um, I'm guessing, yeah. Alicia, do you want to unmute yourself and maybe we can clarify a little bit your question? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Sorry. I can you hear me okay? I can yeah. very well, Alicia. Great. Okay. Um. I'm in a coffee shop, so I'm just like oh, trying to make sure okay. it's not too loud. Yeah. Um, so when trying to do like marketing and networking, I, I really like working with couples. That's one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to explain how um, the trauma of the job can impact the relationship, but it's hard to do it in like presenting at departments or at military gatherings in a way that doesn't sound too, uh, I, I don't want to get too clinical in it. And so I'm just, I'm not finding a good rhythm or way of doing it right now because I haven't done it enough. And so I was just wondering if you have any suggestions about how to present that in a healthy or helpful way when it's not mm -hmm. like in a one-on-one -on -one setting with a couple. Yeah, okay, all right. Um, and are you presenting to people who would be in the role of helpers or just first responders, period? Oh, you're muted again. Uh, can you unmute? Yeah, yeah. sorry. Um, it's two first responders. So like I'm going and saying, hi, my name's Alicia. And yeah, I but just want to let you know they, about the work. They're the responders, responders themselves. They're responders themselves. Okay. All right. So um, let's see. So what I would say to them is uh, I would... I would go back to the TAT stuff, uh, the treating affairs and trauma. And I would say that um, our military population uh, or first responder populations are super, super vulnerable. You know, in the sense that they experience trauma almost every day that they're working as a first responder you know, unless they're sitting in the firehouse, they are experiencing trauma of some sort. And typically what happens is they can only really, they only feel safe confiding in their battle buddies uh, about it because the battle buddies are the ones who share the perceptions they're having to share the feelings and so on. But the reality is that the people, their partners who are either stateside if they're abroad or at home if they're, you know, sitting in a police station, really, really uh, need to hear what they're experiencing. And first responders typically are terrified to tell their partners about it for several reasons. One is that uh, the, res the responder's partner will be traumatized themselves by hearing the story. And they don't want to burden that partner. Two, that uh, if they've had to do something violent in the military, the other person, the partner, if they tell them about that, the partner will see them as murderous or bad. Uh, if they've had to shoot somebody or they've made a mistake and shot somebody, you know, who's a civilian or whatever. Um, and that's not true either. And what you need to really convince people of is that they cannot maintain a good, strong relationship without 
talking about their experiences. They have to talk. And the reality is that when partners have married or partnered with uh, the first responder, they know what they're signing up for. They're not fools. They're not idiots. They know. And they expect to hear stories like that. And if the responder shuts down and doesn't share the stories, it produces terrible emotional distance between them, which then results in greater conflict. The other thing too, is if the responder doesn't share the story uh, with the partner, but shares it with a third party, a battle buddy, who maybe is of the opposite sex or whatever, which does happen, then it's more likely for affairs to happen. And that's not good either. So it's really important to have an inner circle. And in that inner circle is the responder and their partner. And everything is shared there. Everything is shared there. Also, um, if the person is carrying PTSD, it's even more important for the couple to talk to one another and to share the PTSD stories so that that partner can help carry the PTSD along with the responder. And the responder should be talking to the partner about what they need when their trauma gets triggered, which is going to be, you know, all the time. And I think, I don't know this for sure, but in the military, I think there's a vast underestimation of how much trauma there is. Uh, they say it's like 25% or something, and I really think that's BS. Uh, I think there's much more than that. And of course, if they report they've got PTSD, then they're not promoted. You know, there's, there's manipulation around that stuff. So anyway assume your partner has trauma if they've been in Iraq or Afghanistan, whatever. Um, uh, so they need to talk to one another. Uh, they, the responder may be over controlling at home uh, and that doesn't work. They've got to realize that their partner maybe if they've been alone uh, stateside while the other person is abroad uh, has done just fine, thank you very much, in dealing with stuff at home and still is able to do that. So the partner doesn't have to, the responder doesn't have to come back and take over, uh, even though they may want to. Uh, 